Vegas at night is like nothing else. Where to, partner? Be advised, the Lucky 30 is not open to the general public. Trespassers will be shot. So, Benny has been handled, and you've recovered the platinum chip. Let's have it. Our terms were clear. Now that you have the chip in your possession, any attempt to renegotiate payment would be tantamount to blackmail. This is not the time for Q&A. Kindly hand over the chip. Such a small thing, isn't it? And yet so capacious, so very dear. Decades of hiring salvagers out west to search for this little relic in the ruins of a place called Sunnyvale, back then, anyway. That's where the chip was printed on October 22nd, 2077. It was to have been hand-delivered to me here at the Lucky 38 the next day. But the bombs fell first. Suffice it to say, the delivery was never made. A great deal shall be happening. A cascade of events with you taking a central role. At the moment, however, all you need to do is take the elevator all the way down to the bottom level. You'll understand soon enough. area, if you would. I expect you're well familiar with my Securitrons by now. The titanium alloy housing that protects its electronic core deflects small arms and shrapnel easily enough. Its X-25 Gatling laser, produced to spec by Glastinghouse Inc., is deadly against soft targets at medium range. And for close-range suppression or crowd control, the Securitron is armed with a 9mm submachine gun. All of this you probably already knew. What you did not know is that these are the Securitron's secondary weapons. All this time, my Securitrons have had to get by running the Mark I operating system, which lacked software drivers for their primary weapons. Today, with the delivery of the Platinum chip, all that changes. Behold, for the first time, Securitrons running the Mark II OS. The M235 missile launcher gives the Securitron the ability to engage ground and air targets at significantly longer ranges. And a rapid-fire G28 grenade launcher ensures the Securitron is deadly in close-range engagements. The software upgrade also includes drivers for the Securitron's highly sophisticated onboard auto repair systems. Altogether, the Mark II software upgrade confers a 235% increase in combat effectiveness per unit. The city of New Vegas finally has soldiers worthy of protecting it. Return to the penthouse now. We have much to discuss. Trips to the basement are rarely so educational, don't you think? 
I've since broadcast the upgrade to every Securatron in range of my transmitters, and I must say, it's causing quite a stir down on the Strip. Why would I want to go to war against the NCR? They're my best customers. If their leaders weren't scheming to steal Vegas out from under me, I'd have no troubles with the NCR at all. To secure the future of New Vegas, I must have your assistance. The work ahead is dangerous, but you weather danger well. What did you want to discuss? That's because he ceased to be relevant when you recovered the platinum chip. Revenge doesn't interest me. Progress does. Sorry to deny you a moment of primate triumph, but you'll have to go elsewhere to sound your barbaric yawp. What else did you want to discuss? General Oliver's strategy, or tunnel vision, as I like to call it, has been to mass troops at Hoover Dam. He wants to outfight the Legion in a straightforward slugging match, and then, when they rout, pursue and destroy them in detail. A crushing, decisive victory of this sort would overshadow the tactical ingenuity of Chief Hanlon's defense four years ago, you see. A good deal should be obvious to you by now. I won't spoil the rest by talking out of turn. What else did you want to discuss? I've resurrected Vegas, spirit intact. What I need now is the ability to enforce my rightful claim. Not just against Caesar's legion, by the way. In fact, the NCR is a more present and insidious threat. To enforce, one must have force, a position of strength. Years ago, when I detected NCR scouts roaming the Mojave, I could tell from their uniforms that these were no mere tribesmen. I knew it was only a matter of time before an army appeared to take control of the dam, and I knew my Securitrons wouldn't be enough to oppose them. And so I recruited the three families. Vegas belongs to me because I mustered enough strength to bring the NCR to the bargaining table. Indeed it was, and still is, but not without taking significant casualties. Would Kimball and Oliver have traded the lives of hundreds of soldiers for absolute control of Hoover Dam? Oh, yes. They weren't afraid of me. They were afraid of Caesar, that attacking me would leave them vulnerable to a legion offensive. And so they negotiated, not out of the kindness of their hearts, as they try to make it seem, because the calculus of power left no other choice. NCR forces were permitted to occupy Hoover Dam and establish a military base at McCarran Airport. Well, it used to be one. They recognized my sovereignty over the Vegas Strip and agreed to supply electricity and water once their engineers repaired the dam. Written into the treaty were provisions that the NCR do nothing to prevent its soldiers and civilians from visiting the Strip. That's how I harness the NCR to my endeavor. Their occupation has been the engine of my growing economy. The salient issue is that they will go to war with me if given the chance. There's just one reason why the NCR hasn't contrived some outrage to justify invading the Strip. Caesar's Legion. The final battle between those two armies is fast approaching. I can't afford to let either side win on their terms. What else did you want to discuss? <sighs> Hoover Dam, of course. A hydroelectric dam. The NCR had it up and running at 50% capacity within a year of occupying the dam. By treaty, New Vegas receives 5% of its output, more than enough. What else did you want to discuss? It was a place of splendor. As magnificent as today's strip may seem, it's but a shadow of the neon paradise that was Las Vegas. I grew up not far from here, and though I traveled the old world extensively, I never found another place like it. 
By 2065, I deemed it a mathematical certainty that an atomic war would devastate the Earth within 15 years. Every projection I ran confirmed it. I knew I couldn't save the world, nor did I care to, but I could save Vegas, and in the process, perhaps save mankind. I set to work immediately. I thought I had plenty of time to prepare. As it turned out, I was 20 hours short. On the day of the Great War, 77 atomic warheads targeted Las Vegas and its surrounding areas. My networked mainframes were able to predict and force transmit disarm code subsets to 59 warheads, neutralizing them before impact. Laser cannons mounted on the roof of the Lucky 38 destroyed another nine warheads. The rest got through, though none hit the city itself. A suboptimal performance, admittedly. If only the platinum chip had arrived a day sooner. The platinum chip was printed in Sunnyvale, California on October 22nd, 2077, the day before the Great War. It was to have been delivered by courier the following afternoon, but by then, the world had ended. The chip contained vital software upgrades, but not just for my Securitrons. Every aspect of the missile defense grid would have been upgraded too. Given that I had to make do with buggy software, the outcome could have been worse. I nearly died as it was. Software glitches set off a cascade of system crashes. I had to take the Lucky 38's reactor offline, lest it melt down. For nearly five years, I battled power outages and more system crashes until I finally managed to reboot my data core with an older version of the OS. I spent the next few decades in a veritable coma, but I survived, obviously, and eventually thrived. What else did you want to discuss? The next step will require you to infiltrate Caesar's camp at Fortification Hill. Absolutely not. Caesar is of great use to me. I don't want you harming a hair on that man's head, assuming you can find one. I want you to open a hatch in the basement of the derelict weather station atop Fortification Hill. You'll recognize it on sight. The hatch bears the logo of the Lucky 38. Same as the platinum chip. You can't, but the chip can. The hatch will recognize the platinum chip and open sesame. Something very important. I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise, so don't bother asking. I'm not offering you an incentive as crude as money. Though there'll be plenty of that. What I'm offering you is a ground floor opportunity in the most important enterprise on Earth. What I'm offering is a future. For you and for what remains of the human race. Here, take the platinum chip again. You will need it. Upon arrival at the fort, it's likely that you'll be searched and the chip taken from you. Don't worry. It will come back to you. Welcome to the Vegas Strip. Penthouse floor. Casino floor. Excuse me, but are you the courier who caused all of that trouble in the tops? Oh, well, I heard, I mean, we heard, we meaning the followers of the apocalypse, that you had been in there, the Lucky 38, I mean, and we were wondering if you could help us, if it's not too much trouble, of course. 
This is important enough to the followers that we scrape together the caps required for the credit check. And I'm staying at Vault 21, which is pretty cheap, for the strip anyway. Oh, great. The followers of the apocalypse, well, some of us anyway, have been interested in Mr. House's technology, how he stays alive. Of course, no one else is allowed inside the Lucky 38, so no one knows what's going on. Well, except for you. Right. We just want to find out what sort of technology Mr. House has used to stay alive for all these years. It could be of great benefit to the people we try to help, many of whom suffer from hard-to-diagnose illnesses. Ah, I see. I suppose I can give you some medical supplies for your efforts. I assure you, they will be worth plenty of caps. Great! I'll have the medical supplies for you by the time you come back. Here, take this packet sniffer. It'll allow us to intercept data on Mr. House's network. You might have to manually remove the encryption from his data network, but hopefully you won't have too much trouble. Good luck. Excuse me, but are you the courier who caused all of that trouble in the tops? Oh, well, I heard, I mean, we heard, we meaning the followers of the apocalypse, that you had been in there, the Lucky 38, I mean, and we were wondering if you could help us, if it's not too much trouble, of course. This is important enough to the followers that we scraped together the caps required for the credit check. And I'm staying at Vault 21, which is pretty cheap, for the strip anyway. Oh, great. The followers of the apocalypse, well, some of us anyway, have been interested in Mr. House's technology, how he stays alive. Of course, no one else is allowed inside the Lucky 38, so no one knows what's going on. Well, except for you. Right. We just want to find out what sort of technology Mr. House has used to stay alive for all these years. It could be of great benefit to the people we try to help, many of whom suffer from hard-to-diagnose illnesses. Ah, I see. I suppose I can give you some medical supplies for your efforts. I assure you, they will be worth plenty of caps. Great! I'll have the medical supplies for you by the time you come back. Here, take this packet sniffer. It'll allow us to intercept data on Mr. House's network. You might have to manually remove the encryption from his data network, but hopefully you won't have too much trouble. Good luck.
Hey, if you've been able to bug Mr. House's network yet? Good to hear. But it looks like the bug was deactivated a few minutes after it went online. It looks like House has some kind of countermeasure in place to prevent eavesdropping on his network. We'll get through eventually, just not today. Here are those medical supplies I promised. Hopefully you won't need to use them. Take care. Oh, hi. Thanks again for helping us with that data. I mean, the feed only lasted about 30 seconds, and it's not that useful, but... Well, we tried. We were connected for half a minute and received enough data to fill five holodisks. It looked like nonsense at first, but we decoded it. It was all biometric data, life signs from Mr. House. The technology he's using is so advanced that it samples data hundreds of times per second. It's fascinating, but depressing. Whatever technology he has can't possibly be practical for the people out here. About five years now, I have family back in Arroyo. But this is where all the good work is being done, so to speak. NCR taxes and inflation have been hard for a lot of people to deal with, and most of the money's going to the war effort. There's not much funding for medical research with OSI or any other group. Not unless it has a military application, anyway. I'm interested in medicine, but it's not my strong suit. I try to help out with any computer issues the followers have. That's why I was helping out with the research into Mr. House's technology. Trying to, anyway. After two tries, I think I've learned enough. I'm sure there's something more promising I could be helping the other followers with. Uh, oh yeah. I didn't tell you about the first time. I'd rather not talk about it if you don't mind. True. All right. The first try was a little less professional. Someone important on the Strip had access to some of House's technology. Specifically, a Securitron. And more specifically, the someone was Benny. I know, I know. He shot you in the head and everything. But this was a while ago. I knew he was sleazy, but I didn't realize he was so cold-blooded. He sure didn't. Benny was pretty tight-lipped and cryptic about the thing, but he did let me poke around in it for a while. I wound up helping Benny a lot more than he helped me. Once he had access to the Securitron's memory banks, he kicked me out of the tops. Big surprise, right? Should have seen that coming. The Securitron was disabled somehow. Might have been an EMP, given some of the damage I saw. Anyway, he wanted it re-enabled and connected to Mr. House's data network. The trick was getting it to be invisible on the network. If Mr. House detects a rogue Securitron in his system, he remotely fries it. Getting around that security feature was a bit tricky. Yeah, strange as it sounds, I figured that badmouthing one of the Strip's most powerful people wasn't a good idea. The only reason why I'm telling you any of this is because he's gone now. What do you want to know? I already told you. I don't want to talk about it. See you when I see you.
What business have you in Cottonwood Cove, outsider? You were the mark of Kaisar. You must be who Cursor Lucullus is waiting for. You may continue, but be warned. Mark or no, we will not tolerate aggressive action by visitors in the camp. You're the one Lucullus said would come. You'll find him waiting for you down at the docks. Very well. It's a Legion outpost. What does it look like? We crossed the river when the profligates fled from Searchlight. From here, we stage raiding parties and process captures. I'm an officer of the Legion, of the rank. Decanos. When we encamped, I commanded a contubernium of eight legionaries. So, I command what's left. Under the wise leadership of Centurion Aurelius, of course. As much as their cowardice will allow, the profligates avoid open battle. But on good days, we find one of their patrols. Their landmines have caused us more trouble than their marksmanship, which is lacking. That would be worth knowing, especially if we can rearm and reuse them. The light is a button that can interrupt detonation. Interesting. We were too busy throwing ourselves to the ground to figure that out. So, to rearm the mine, we just press the button again. Simple. The profligates will regret that we learned this. Wale. The mark of Kaisar, granted to a profligate? <laughs> what is the world coming to? Cursor Lucullus is waiting for you with the barge at the docks. He will take you to the fort to speak with Kaisar. Cursor Lucullus is waiting for you at the docks. He'll take you to Kaisar. As much as the profligate's cowardice will allow, they wouldn't dare attack us here, but we catch them out on patrols. With two Contubernia at my command, I've killed and captured four times my numbers. The killing of profligates should never go unrewarded. I'll pay you a small sum per tag. Go see Decanus Severus when you have tags. It is the armor of a Centurion. You have the rare honor of beholding it unspattered by the blood of my inferiors. Of course I am. When Woolpace and Kalta drove the NCR from Searchlight by clever means, Kaisar himself ordered me to set up this camp to destroy the profligates. It's a modest presence, a single finger of the Legion reaching across the river's narrows. But I will see to it that Kaisar's will shall be done. How many? Just two? <laughs> Was there something else you wanted to bother me with? Wale. True to Kaisar.
I see you bear the mark of Kaiser. No, no, no. They haven't yet earned the right to be called slaves. Those three in the pen are captures, nothing more. Back at the fort, I'd have those three half-broken and well on their way. But this is just a holding area, so all I do is assess their fitness and decide whether to send them on. Why would it bother me to enslave these wretches? They have no purpose, no creed, no honor. They live in pitiful squalor, undisciplined. To enslave them is to save them, to give them purpose and virtue. Honestas, industria, prudentia. Even the virtues of slaves are beyond the dissolute on this side of the river. It's a weak bunch, to be honest. I'd rather have extra currency to buy supplies or better captures off traders. There's a boy, too old to be trained as a legionary. Normally they have to die, but he's too frail to make trouble. The old woman's dried up, but she could help with gardening and upkeep, if she can learn to keep her mouth shut. The girl's the only one of real value, young enough to breed, not hideous to look at, What's your offer for the lot? Let me know if you change your mind. It was easy. The Colorado is narrow here, and when the profligates abandoned searchlight, there was no one to guard the crossing. It's just a small outpost, but we keep busy. Raiding parties go out, new captures come in. I have Blackfoot in me. The first tribe that Kaisar ever led into battle. The tribe that formed the Legion. If not for him, we'd still be living in tents or shacks, scavenging for food like animals. If we were alive at all. The best cursor in the Legion. You'll reach Fortification Hill without incident, that's for sure. Wait until you see the encampment. How massive it is. And a personal audience with mighty Kaisar. Glorious. Wale, 